So a lot of things have happened over the past couple of days. First of all, Sweden qualified for next year's World Cup in soccer. Second thing that happened is I went hiking in the mountains. But in terms of actually getting stuff done on the game that I'm working on, it's been a pretty unproductive week. If there's one thing that I've learned in game development, it's that to finish the core loop of the game is incredibly important, especially if you're a small team or maybe you're even alone in developing the game. Now, the core loop is obviously going to be different from game to game, but it could be something like you start the level, you finish it, you get coins, you buy upgrades, then you move on to the next level and the loop is repeated over and over and over again. The reason it's important to finish this as early on in development as possible is because this is actually what your game is going to be about. And if that core loop is boring, then you'll probably want to know about it so you can try to fix it or maybe even abandon the project. What you don't want to do is to start adding very specific details to the game and start to polish it before it's actually time to start polishing. So just to recap, it's good to finish the core loop of the game as soon as possible and it's bad to start polishing the game early. With that said, I think it's pretty obvious what I'm gonna do today. All jokes aside, the reason I'm still not able to start working on the core loop is not because I don't know what the game is going to be about. It's just that I still need some time to figure out how to give the player a sense of progression in the game. And yes, technically that is also what the core loop is, but it's not so much a question of what to do, it's more a question of how to do it. Basically what I'm trying to say is I need to think of a way how to translate this into this. Who's this? Are you not entertained? But I'll deal with that another day. Fortunately, there are some things that I know that I'm gonna have to implement into the game sooner or later. So I'm just gonna do them today so I can check them off of my to-do list. The first thing I've done is to add the possibility to dismember an opponent and for your character to be dismembered by the opponent. I don't want to overdo it, so it's gonna happen rarely, uh, only if a certain body part of her character has taken a lot of hits. So in the ragdoll that is spawned when a character is defeated, I've added in an extra object for the arms and one for the legs. Uh, whenever a character loses a limb, I will simply make the arm or the legs visible and hide the same body part of the ragdoll. In theory, this seemed like something that would be easy to implement, but as you can see in the game, it's looking pretty weird right now. I'm gonna have to tweak it later on to make it look more believable. Uh, obviously, the limbs need to be moved around a bit in the air after the weapon impact, and I'll probably have to add some more blood effects as well. But as I always do when I get stuck, I'll move on to the next thing on my list. So the second thing I did was I added some blood stains that will be spawned whenever a character is hit. I'll head over to Photoshop now to draw some better sprites. I'll make three variations with three different amounts of blood so I can switch out the sprite that has already been spawned instead of spawning a new one in the case of blood being spilled in the same place more than once. Alright, so the code is working, but the blood is way too exaggerated, it's too bright and colorful. Also, I see now that the most dense versions of the blood stains are looking too square. So, back to Photoshop to try to fix it. So that's looking a lot better, uh, still not completely satisfied with it. I would like to make the blood fade in instead of just appearing out of nowhere, but for now it will have to do. The last thing I want to add is just a small detail that has been bothering me for a while. It should come as no surprise by now that it has to do with blood again. More specifically, the fact that there's no blood on the weapons after they've been used. So I'm gonna quickly add that now. And there we go, uh, these weren't huge changes and I still need to work on them a bit more but I think they add an extra layer of detail to the game and it's definitely looking better than it did before.
Okay, so I think that's where I'm gonna leave things for now. Let me know what you think in the comments and yeah, see you in the next video.